Good afternoon. I'm Chris Gonerman, the author of the Basic Fantasy Role Playing Game. Uh, this is my cat Cole, uh, C O A L. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about what I've talked about in my previous video. This book, The Demons and Dragons RPG, which is a copy, word for word um, copy of the Basic Fantasy Role Playing Game 4th Edition. I have acquired a physical copy. I ordered it on Amazon just before it was withdrawn from there, and I really didn't think they would ship it to me, but I got one. Um, this is the work of Bishop Madison Brooks. Um, I think Bishop is a self-assigned title, um, but I am going to use the term uh, probably throughout my discussion. Uh, it's just become a habit over the last couple of days since I learned this person exists. Demons and Dragons, um, copyright 2023, Gothic Church, with my copyright removed from it. Um, the dedication removed and ch or changed, rather, the copyright removed and replaced with the 2023 Gothic Church copyright, and the title changed to Demons and Dragons rather than Basic Fantasy. As an aside, since there are no demons in the original Basic Fantasy, and this is a word for word copy, um, there are no demons in this book. I, I think that's a little funny. Basically, the author took the author, I'll air quote that, Madison Brooks took um, my book, uh, the work of myself and dozens of people over almost 20 years, uh, and filed off the serial numbers, put uh, their own names on it, and replaced the artwork, mostly legally, um, the artwork in the Basic Fantasy RPG Core Rules, and all of our books, in fact, is licensed to me personally. Uh, the intent of that being that anybody who legally produces a game based on Basic Fantasy, where all of the text is under an open license, under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license, anyone who produces a book that is that copies my rules, my words, our game, uh, that makes a copy of it, legally cannot use any of the artwork except for a small handful of pieces that are public domain and a small number of pieces that are required for the use of the book. A couple of maps, um, the character sheet for Darien that is in the character creation section are part of that. They're covered by the license the same as the text, but the actual artwork in the book, the decorative artwork including the cover art, is um, licensed to me personally for use with my projects. In other words, if, as long as I'm the publisher of them, it's fine, but no one else can legally use them. Um, Madison Brooks carefully removed most of it. There were some items that they did not realize were copyright protected, and briefly after we made contact uh, a couple days ago when this all started, uh, briefly um, there were PDF versions available of the Demons and Dragons book with the copyrights fixed, although I never saw them, so I'm just trusting that they actually were fixed. Uh, and with the artwork, the extra artwork that, had, uh, that was still copyrighted and removed, at least what I was able to identify. I have not found any other than the dice images on page two, which were the copyrighted artwork that I no noticed. I haven't found any other copyrighted art that's still in the book, so I think... Um, this in this book, so I think that that PDF version probably was, probably was legal, um, but this version wasn't. This is, to my understanding of the law, this is the illegal book, an illegal copy because it, it's taken the the copyright statement off of the book. Um, I've talked about this a lot already. I've talked about this in my last video. I've talked about this on several venues online on social media. So I'm really not going to talk a lot more about the whole situation and how it got to be this way and so forth. I'm going to talk a little bit about the book itself and, well, number one, this could be done legally. It wasn't, but it could have been done legally, and it's that's not a good idea. I'm going to talk about why. The main thing about this, as I said, is because the art is copyright licensed um, to me personally, uh, and they couldn't use it, and they did try to be legal by removing it. This is where I actually cracked the book open when I opened it up yesterday when it came in the mail. 
Um, that is the elemental section. You'll notice the image on this side and the image on this side of the same image. Uh, they're the same um, hard shell, rocky looking humanoid. And if you go back a page, you'll find that there's the same one over here without a head. That's the cold elemental. The other two are the earth elemental and the metal elemental. And they use the same piece of art for all of them. Um, and if you turn back to the golem section, in there, there's the clay golem, same piece of art. The same drawing depicts all of those monsters, as well as the iron golem. So we have, well, the same thing over and over again. Um, inevitable, I suppose, when you're not paying for artwork or running a project where people will donate you artwork and you have to go take the free stuff. There may not be enough variety. Um, but as I say, if the, if the license, if, if the copyrighted artwork had all been removed properly, and I'm not faulting them for that, and the copyright statements hadn't been mangled and re removed and replaced with something else, uh, it would be a legal book. It would be legal to make this. You absolutely could make this book. It's not even a bad looking book if you don't pay if you don't pay too much attention to the fact that the cover art is more Asian in style than the interior content because basic fantasy is based on European fantasy. It just is. Um, so it's a little odd. But it is a pretty color. It's actually kind of a nice book um, that way. I mean it's an Amazon book, produced the same way that Amazon produces our books. So it looks and feels a lot like Amazon books. Um, but this is a bad idea. This is a, a straight up copy of our game. They're selling it for $18.65. They were selling it for $18.65. You can't get it anymore. Our book is $8.35 because our books are all sold very close to cost. This book obviously was sold with intent to make some profit. Now, the way profit works on Amazon, I think it's likely that this book probably had eight or nine dollars, certainly didn't have ten dollars in profit in it, despite being more than ten dollars more expensive than our book, because some of that profit, when you raise your profit margin, some of that profit goes to Amazon. It's just how they do business. Um, so there's probably definitely less than ten dollars in profit in it, probably eight or nine maybe at most, um, which still wouldn't be bad if you could sell copies of it. But say for the moment that you are a uh, game collector or just an avid tabletop role player who likes OSR games and buys them whenever they get the chance. And you buy this book not knowing what it is, crack it open and realize it's basic fantasy. We aren't the best known game, but we're well known. There, we've been in this, been at this for almost two decades and a lot of people have heard of basic fantasy. Many people have looked at it and anyone who collects the old OSR games we'll be familiar with our interior. We'll have an idea what the game looks like, the way it's laid out and everything, and nothing was really changed. This book is laid out almost exactly the way I did. Uh, I think the flow may have given uh, Bishop Brooks some trouble along the way. Uh, it does me, so I'm not surprised at that. Um, and this makes me wonder about certain parts of the book that are hot spots whenever I have to edit it. Uh, I'm going to go back and take a look at those real quick. Um, but... I mean, it could have been done legally. There's certainly no reason it couldn't have been done legally. Um, but if you bought the book yeah, expecting... Well, that is interesting. Okay, the pages that give me the worst trouble, they dramatically reformatted. Uh, interesting. Um, if you bought this book and discovered it was just basic fantasy and you paid more than $10 more than basic fantasy and really didn't get a better book, certainly. Um, I would argue that it is not quite as nice. I think our artwork is overall better than what's in this book, but even if it was nice looking art or a bunch of slick, um, soulless AI art, um, you still paid more money for the same game and you didn't get the authentic version and you didn't get a version that had any substantial improvements. They, they didn't do anything. I say improvements in a sense, not that I think the game can be improved because of course basic fantasy role playing game is perfect. I must say that it's my child. I must say that about it. But, um, but it, 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 what you might see as improvements, added things that you might like, even that wasn't done here. But even if it was done, 
it would have to be substantial. You'd have to make a substantially different game. Um, people have talked about making a sci-fi version of Basic Fantasy. If somebody came along and did something like that outside of the project, away from our group, and just took the game and mangled it around and made it into a science fiction game, and did it legally, removing the artwork, which they'd probably want to do anyway, and um, keeping the uh, copyright statements and simply adding their own on top, they'd be fine. They could do that. And people might buy it and might like it. They might like having a game that's mechanically similar to basic fantasy, but it's set in a sci-fi universe. I'm not going to say that that's a bad idea. Um, I personally am not terribly interested in that. I have a different taste in sci-fi than I do in fantasy, so I probably wouldn't care for the game itself. But if somebody wanted to do it, you know, they could. But just taking the game and making a copy of it, selling it at a profit that makes it much more expensive than the original is sold for, I can't see how that's a viable business model. Um, too much money for the same thing, people are going to be unhappy about that. Um, too much money for the same thing with public domain art. Um, people are just not going to be happy with that across the board. So, I mean, my advice is just don't do it. I think this is a mistake. I think that this was a mistake from the beginning. Uh, I'm not going to comment on the decision-making process of Bishop Brooks, how this was done. Um, that is not a problem for me to worry about. Um, I'm just pointing out what I think would be issues for anybody who tried to do that. Um, I'm going to digress just a little bit on this, onto a subject that's come up recently. People have asked about making their own games using basic fantasy. This question has come up a couple of times recently. The question about the science fiction games. Another fellow had a question about creating a um, parody type game, something like the earlier versions of Hackmaster before they kind of removed the parody aspects from it. Um, using basic fantasy as a core, and we discussed that. There are three options. If you want to make a profit off of the game that you're creating, you're going to have to take it away from us. I mean, you're going to have to develop it on your own. Um, we're not going to accommodate someone trying to make money off of our work that we've done as a labor of love through our forum. Um, so, you know, it's, it's something you got to do on your own. you got to remove the artwork. You can't retain any of it. Normally, for a science fiction game, you'd want to, but for like a parody fantasy game, you might want to retain a lot of the artwork. Um, I can see that that would be beneficial to somebody building a game like that. So the question comes down then to, to what are you going to do? You have to do your own development work and get your own artwork and so forth. You won't have access to our proofing, proofing resources. You won't have access to our layout um, procedures. Um, none of the, of the sluggish pipeline that we've built will be available to somebody make, trying to make a profit-making venture out of it. If you want to share the game for free, you could do it on your own. I don't really know why you'd want to. Um, why not take advantage of, of our project? If someone came to me and they had, were putting together, uh, came to our, to our forum, and they were putting together a parody game or a science fiction game or whatever, and they shared their work in progress, just as we always advise people to do, they would have... If it was going to be published through our project, they would have access to the artwork. Um, they would have access to our, I mean, this, this whole thing is they have to be publishing through the project. It has to be part of our, of our community activities. But our community would absolutely pile up behind them. Um, proofing resources would be made available. Uh, layout would, assistance would be offered. We could uh, hash out details of things like um, fonts and so forth. Um, if you needed contributors to help with parts of the game, um, they'd be available. If you wanted to do it all, all on your own, that's absolutely your decision. Uh, we'll work with authors however they want to work on a project as long as they're sharing under the same kind of terms that we share under. And that's basically what I would recommend. Someone could do a free version all on their own. And that's, they're fine. But that's their business. I don't understand why you'd want to do that. but. If you want to do that, that's perfectly within your rights. As long as you, in all of these cases, follow the license, retain the copyright statements, remove the things you don't have rights to. That's all there is to it. Um, and again, if they did it through the project, we would work it into the project as an ongoing thing. We would 
make it fit. Now, if you set out, this is what I'm talking about creating a game. If you set out to write an adventure, and you want your adventure to be compatible with basic fantasy role-playing game, and you want to make it a commercial item, it's possible to write an adventure without copying anything more than maybe statistics and monster just monster names, just the names, from our books and using them in your own adventure and not even have to copy our copyright. My understanding of fair use is that they could do that. I would not challenge somebody who did that. And they could even say it was compatible with basic fantasy RPG and I'm not sure there's anything I can do to say that they can't. Nor do I really want to. If somebody wants to do that, that's absolutely their business. The rules for Creative Commons are much simpler than the rules for the OGL. So it should be easier for somebody who wanted to create a profit-making adventure. Um, I Again, I feel like very few people or businesses can ever make money um, selling role-playing game materials. Can make enough money to make it worth the effort of actually having it. I've got a few friends who, who, who do that. There are several members of the project, for example, who have side businesses where they sell supplements and uh, adventure materials that are compatible that are not part of our project, and that's their business um, if they want to do that. So it would be possible to create compatible materials without reference to our license uh, and sell them however you want to, as long as you don't copy any of our artistic presentation, any of the words we use to describe things in effect. Um, so this is these are the options. Um, I don't know that there's a lot more I need to say on this subject. Uh, I, as, I, I, as I said, I, I've made this video three times now. Well, three and a half. Um, because I've been trying to get my presentation right, I've been trying to make sure that I cover the things that I need to cover. I think that's it. I think that basically covers everything I had to say. Uh, if you are interested in participating in the Basic Fantasy Project, um, join us. There's a video in the Solomon I Speaks um, catalog about the Basic Fantasy Project. If you wonder how we work, you can watch that video and where I explain all about how we do things, how we create uh, as a community and how we share the things we've created with each other and the wider, the wider OSR community um, for free because we believe in that. We believe in sharing. We're aggressive believers in sharing. Um, join the forum. That's uh, what I always tell people to do. We'd love to see you there. But the Facebook group and the Discord are also good places to keep up on what's going on. Um, maybe not quite in as much detail. You can't really see the, the sausage being made if you're only hanging out in those places. Um, for those who, again, for those who were involved in the whole tracking down the Gothic Church and Madison Brooks situation over the weekend, a reminder, we're done. We don't need to do any more. I do, will mention, and I've, got, I've posted this on social media, there is another author named Madison Brooks who is not the bishop, who is not the person who created this book or the other books in the series, um, copying repeatedly from us and from other game designers. The other Madison Brooks is not involved in this, and unfortunately Goodreads has mixed her up with the bishop and is showing her purple butterfly notebook in the same list with the satanic tome. Um, I'm hopeful that somebody gets that sorted out soon. Uh, I've, I've heard from uh, uh, someone with librarian privileges on Goodreads who said that they might be able to fix it, so I'm hopeful that that will happen. In any event, um, for those of you who are involved in that whole activity, we're done. It's, it's taken care of. Everything is taken care of. Um, I know there's still a site out there where people can, can buy the PDF. I, it's not worth pursuing at this point. As long as everyone understands that it's not the legit game, it's not something that we're doing, it's not something that we've approved. Quite the opposite. Uh, I think that's all we needed to do. Um, hopefully the next video I do will actually have some interesting forward-thinking, forward-looking content um, in it. Uh, some advice or something useful. Um, but I felt like I needed to kind of talk about this a little bit. 
Uh, there's a lot of questions that have come up just recently that are all related to this situation, so I felt like I could cover them all in one video. Thank you for your time, uh, and have a nice week.